Well, the failed coup closed Istanbul's airport. Stuck in that chaos was Milton Smith, a California resident who has been stranded there since Friday, and he is joining us now by phone. Milton? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. During the height of the coup, what did you see? So um, I was in a cafe, and it was really calm for a while. Um, and then we heard a gunshot, and people literally just started running and screaming, and a couple people got trampled on. Um, and as the night got, went on, that happened a few times. where We'd hear, we'd hear gunshots and people stampeding and running. Um, and then at one point, we actually heard a bomb and felt it. Um, me being from California, I'm used to earthquakes. And it felt like a 6.4 earthquake. Um, everything was shaking, the lights were low, and people were scattering everywhere. And again, stampeding kept happening. And we had no direction or any idea of what was happening on the outside. Where are you now, Milton? <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm still at the airport. Um, I've been here now going on about 27 hours. Um, God willing, I'm going to get on a flight tonight um, at 1.30 a.m. to head to Johannesburg. Um, in transit to the International AIDS Conference, which is being held in Durban, South Africa. So tell us, I mean, what is the situation with the flights? So it's been chaotic. First of all, I haven't heard from anyone, the State Department um, or the embassy, um, with regards to information. I've gotten a lot of generic information, thanks to the support of my friends who have been amazing, and my family, who have kind of kept to social media and called a lot of people and kind of giving me updates. Um, the, the challenge has been finding out what's correct and what's not correct. So we've heard things, those of us who are here in the airport, that conflict with what's being told to our friends and family um, via the media. And so one of the challenges for me has been figuring out how to weed through that and, and determine what's going to be best for me to get me out of this country alive. I see. You know, we are hearing here that the government actually rallied people to, to take on this, this coup, failed coup, on social media. Um, did you see that around you? Did you see people uh, looking at their, their smartphones and saying, hey, I want to fight back? Yes, definitely. And we had a young woman, and I don't remember her name in the chaos. Um, she was amazing. Um, she was a Turkish national. Um, she cried a lot. She said, you know, those of us who are here that are visiting, you guys don't understand. Once you leave, I'm just going to have to live here. So she gave us a lot of intel, things that were happening on the ground, being from social media. And so I really felt like I got an understanding of what was happening locally based on her information, what she was sharing with us. And we kind of hunkered down together, um, her along with another person from Australia. We kind, of, we kind of supported each other as everything was happening. So were you, Milton, were you taking cover? Were you afraid? Yeah, definitely. I think the first thought was just the fear. Because, I mean, I was at a cafe um, having a beverage um, alone. I'm traveling alone. And the first shot rang out and people started running. And so that, that fear of just not knowing what's happening. Um, and so I started running as well. I had my bag and I started running. Um, and then I got to a place where I wanted to look at exit. Fortunately for me, I work in a hospital, so we, we have these kind of situations um, and drills quite often. Um, and after Orlando, we actually recently had one, kind of a refresher. So it was really in my mind. Um, and I interacted with a, a gentleman from Australia who actually happened to also be a doctor from um, Australia. And so similar to me, he had that experience of what to do in a hospital situation. And so we were, I mean, we literally just turned that on, looked around, looked at exits, um, planned plan strategies. Um, and what was interesting, I think, is that that actually really consoled me, I think. It really made me feel like I didn't have to worry about what was really happening. Um, I kind of got lost in the details of planning and looking out for other people. And I think having the gentleman, his name is Bruce, um, I never got his last name, um, but Bruce, the two of us, really kind of like just took charge and worked together in a situation. That made it a lot more easier, I think, for me to kind of check out and not really think about my own concern, but really figuring out What's going to happen? What, what options do we have um, for survival? Milton, what are you being told right now as to when you might fly out of there? <sighs> so that's another challenge, I think. I think we've, I've been told multiple things from multiple people. And at this point, I'm, I'm not sure who to believe, but I'm really excited to announce that I do have a ticket now. 
um, for a flight that leaves at 1.30 a.m. local time. Um, it's going to get me to Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, previous to that, though, I had a couple other attempts to leave the country, um, go to Germany. I almost got a flight to Qatar. And both of those um, flights, one of my friends purchased their flight, and then it got canceled. And then the Qatar flight, um, I was fortunate enough to have a friend who works for the Qatar Airlines who was going to book a flight for me. And as he booked it, it said delayed. And the delayed went from um, two hours to canceled. So at this point, I'm hunkering down. I'm still waiting for a gate announcement. Um, but uh, fingers are crossed. Um, i got a lot of people supporting me. I'm going to get on that 130 flight and end up in South Africa, which is my original destination. Well, Milton, we are so glad that you are safe and that you felt prepared and comforted by your training in that situation. Um, we really uh, hope you make it to that conference on time. I'm, I'm sure you'll be out of there pretty soon. Thanks a lot, Milton Smith.